Hi, everybody. How are you? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you, right? It's been a minute, just a minute though, because we were together last week on Friday, right before New Year's, right? It's just crazy to me to think that we're already in another year. <laughs> Anybody else gonna have whiplash? Like, whoa, what happened to last year? It literally flew by. And whew, I'm I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm not mad about it at all. So, how are you guys doing? How are you? Some of you are in the, <laughs> I see some of my YouTube people are in the comments and they are grumbling about snow. You guys, oh my gosh. So, you guys, we had this whole conversation last week about snow and how, and I really had myself convinced that like I was not going to get to see snow this winter because where I live here in the South, it literally last week was in the 70s, right? I mean, it was like 70 degrees outside, 75. In some places, it even got as hot as 80 degrees. It was warm and it was really weird warm too, you know, like you kind of got the feeling like something, something's on, something's, something's coming. Well, it came. It was snow. We went from 70, 75 degrees to 29 degrees and snow everywhere. And you guys, I couldn't be happier. Like, I know a lot of you out there do not like snow. You just don't. You hate it. You don't like cold weather. You don't like snow. You want it to be summer. You want it to be 75 degrees all year round. I am not one of those people. <laughs> so when I woke up with snow on the ground, oh, I was just like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was so cool. So, um, yeah, you guys, it must have worked because I was asking all of you who had snow last week to send it my way send me the rest of it. Like if you've got some more, right? If you're, if you're keeping a little pocket of snow, just send it to me. I'll take it gladly, gladly, any day, all day. <laughs> it makes me want to like learn how to ski. I've never done that before, but it's because we don't have enough snow. We don't have enough snow for that. But yeah, so thank you for everybody who sent me your snow. <laughs> and happy new year to everybody as well. Um, all right, let's talk. Let's talk about it. So here we are, brand new week, brand new year. I cannot wait to see what happens this year. You guys, I already have things happening in my life. And I, I'm, I'm keeping it all on the down low at the moment. Um, just because I don't want to jinx anything, right? I don't want to jinx anything, but I got to tell you, I got some really exciting news yesterday and I've got my fingers crossed for some more exciting news, hopefully within the next two days. Um, just some really good things, some positive things. Cause you guys know the year I had last year, the year some of you all had last year, we could really go for some good news. So um, I'm keeping, I'm keeping some of those things under wraps, but when I can, I can tell you all about it. I can't wait. Um, all I can say is that I hope that the snow is a precursor to the snowball of good things coming. Cause I, I need some wins. I really, really do. So thank you for everybody for your prayers and positivity and sending me your snow. And um, just know that uh, behind the scenes, behind this little Facebook situation that we have going on here, uh, there are some big changes happening in my personal life and I'm really looking forward to them. So, all right. That being said, things don't stop. No stopping here. We're going right on. We're just going to keep on trucking, right? It is a brand new year and that means brand new projects for you guys. So I, I'm a little bit behind, right? Because I took a I took a, a week off right at the end of December. Um, and well, it was the week before the last, you guys know, week before last, I took the whole week off. So that put me kind of behind with Sam's Beadbox, right? Everybody got, not everybody, but if you subscribe, to Sam's Beadbox. You got your December Beadbox already. A lot of people have already posted great things with it. Um, just made some really beautiful pieces of jewelry. I see those in the group. I see those posted in Sam's group and they're so gorgeous and I haven't done anything with mine yet. Now Sam's not here today um, just because this was kind of a last minute decision on my part. Um, but I have Sam's Beadbox. I have all the beads in front of me and I want to use them today for like a design on the fly. 
right? Because we do a lot of designing on the fly. And those are fun because sometimes we have happy accidents and things turn into amazing designs. Other times we just make pretty jewelry. And that's what my hope is for today. We're going to use some of these gorgeous beads. So I've already got a win going on right there. Just check that box already because the beads are gorgeous. So whatever I make is going to be pretty. We know that. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is probably put together a necklace. I've got something in my mind that we're going to put together to with each other um, that I haven't actually put together. It's going to be an easy one, something that you will probably be able to recreate fairly easily with things in your own stash if you don't have Sam's Speedbox. Um, however, if you are not subscribed to Sam's Speedbox and you would like to be subscribed, I've got a coupon code. You just use the coupon code Sarah, S-A-R-A, no H, no H. <laughs> and um, that will get you $5 off of your first Sam Speed box. Uh, I don't know what the cutoff is for the next box. Uh, I know that January's box will be here like in the blink of an eye, but I think if you sign up now, you're signed up for the February box. So just so you know, um, I, I love Sam. We all love Sam. All right, so that's what we have planned for today. As far as the rest of the week is concerned, though things are kind of weird in my personal life, everything else is uh, still a go, right? Nothing's changing. Don't get worried. I'll still be here today and on Friday for our Feel Good Friday show and Hardwired group. We will be meeting at 4.30 today. Guys, I just wanted to say thank you. I promise we are going to get into our project here in just a second. Um, but... I just want to say thank you to all of our new members of the Hardwired group. I cannot wait to get started with you guys. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in joining the Hardwired group, you're going to have to wait till the end of the month when we open up for enrollment again. But we got a ton of new members for the month of January, and I cannot wait. You guys, Danielle Wicks is going to be our special guest for this month. I got to get together with her later today and figure out what day we're going to do that. Just lots of fun things, right? Okay, so no more chat about this. Let's do what we came here to do, and that's make a piece of jewelry. So I'm going to turn you guys around, and we are going to do that, right? Let's see here. Remember all of the buttons I got to push to get you guys in the right spot. We're ready to go. So I see some of, some, well, at least one person is saying that their audio is not matched up with the um, <laughs> with the visuals. I have absolutely no control over that whatsoever. I really don't even know what to tell you to do. But I do know that a lot of times if things like that are messed up, if you'll go away and come back, I think a lot of times that fixes things. It's like that um, when people tell you, have you like if you've got computer problems or like did you turn it off and turn it back on that's kind of how i feel about it. well if you go away and then come back <laughs> right i hope that that fixes it for you because i know how weird that can be all right so i've pulled a few beads from the sam's bead box from december uh this is definitely just a tiny tiny little sampling like i, I have all of the things here but i was just kind of looking before we got started trying to figure out what i wanted to use in our project today and I think this is what I'm going to go with, but I don't know for sure, because again, it's a design on the fly. So we're going to find, we're going to find new things along the way, right? We're going to, we're going to figure this out together. What I do want, I will lay out kind of what I was thinking. Okay. So what I was thinking is this pendant is so pretty. This is Chet Glass matte bronze it's just gorgeous i am a huge huge fan of bronze and metallics of any kind i i prefer those over like bright gold any day of the week so i think we're going to build around this but what i want to do sort of like the earrings that we made on feel good friday i want to have things that are dangling from this because you know i have to be extra so we're going to start here and then i want to do some drops but I can't decide if I want to use like these metallic drops, these blue iris, like I'm obsessed with these. I don't know if they're going to be too big though. So what I was thinking was like, maybe do some staggered drops that are going to come from behind our pendant, right? And I don't know, I feel like maybe something should go on the front, but I don't know quite what. Uh, and then I'm going to use some chain. I am going to use some gold chain. I just have some like thin gold little cable chain. And I have some gold German style wire. 
for things. I think we'll probably do some knotted head pins for these guys. I think I'm going to do like a little section of beads and then a chain and then another little section of beads. But let's start with our focal first, okay? All right. Sally says, is this a typical Sam's bead box? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, let me just show you because I, I'm not going to go through all the beads because there are so many of those unboxings, but this pendant, these beads, there is a mix of these beautiful seed beads. There are these pyrite beads, some more check glass these Preciosa crystals. And some of these are missing because I'm using them in a project later today. Um, I'll bring in everything just to show you the pile. I won't show you all the beads, but I will show you the pile just so that you understand like what all you get with Sam's Bead Box because like that's a lot, <laughs> right? That's a lot. And the quality is outstanding. So if you've not ever had the opportunity to check out Sam's Bead Box, I definitely recommend going and doing that. It's like Christmas in your mailbox, you know? He always sends top quality, absolutely beautiful curated boxes that always have a theme and I, you you can't beat them. They're so, so good. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna get started with our focal here. So we're gonna use our our beautiful pendant, but I I'm, I'm, have to have dangles from it because I'm just, I'm like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some knotted head pins. Let's do three knotted head pins with some 22 gauge um german style wire and i've got this gold color here because i think it goes really well with our bronze bless you do you guys say bless you to your dogs <laughs> i'm one of those all right so lots of people are having trouble with sound and audio today donna doesn't have any sound at all i don't know what's going on out there all right, so we're going to start out with a knotted head pin, okay? So I've cut myself a piece of 22-gauge German-style wire. Now, you can do this with 24-gauge um, if you want to. You can also do this with 20-gauge. Uh, Just keep in mind that the size or the gauge of the wire is going to determine, of course, how big your knot is. So I try to keep it in the middle with the 22. Um, I actually would normally use 24 for this kind of knot, but... I don't have any. I mean, I do, but it's not, it's not the best. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to start with taking the tip of the wire right at the tip of our round nose pliers. Okay. We're going to take that wire and we are going to wrap around the very tip of our round nose pliers one time all the way around. Okay. And then we're going to go a second time all the way around and you want to stop where you see that flush cut in the wire, that's how you know that you've gone around twice, right? Before you take this off of the tool, you wanna take the wire and bend it so that it is running underneath the two little coils that you made, okay? Now you wanna take it off of the tool and this next step is you wanna take the wire and bend it backwards and back through, this was a really short piece of wire. I don't know what I was thinking. Take it and it also has a little bend. Take the tail end back through the two little coils that you made, okay? So now you've made yourself like a little lasso, okay? And just pull that a little bit further. Now we wanna use our, our nylon jaw pliers for this. Okay, so we're gonna take our nylon jaw pliers and we're gonna grab the wire and we want the two coils that we made to be right up against the edge of the nylon jaw pliers, okay? Now, we're gonna take this little tail of wire that's coming through the nylon jaw pliers and we're gonna pull. And that's gonna create a knot in the end of our wire. So it makes like a little rosette. It's a cute little, a cute little knot. You've essentially made yourself a head pin right? With a knot in it. We're going to take one of our drops and we're going to thread that on and you can see how your bead sits right on that knot that you created. Okay. So now what I want to do is, hmm, I want to do a wrapped loop, but I am going to use chain. I don't know how long these chain pieces need to be. So I'm working literally off of the spool at the moment. Cause again, design on the fly and we'll trim our chain up after we, um, we decide how long we want these little dangles to be. 
So the reason that matters is because I'm going to wire wrap this directly to it. Okay. So I'm grabbing the wire where it is exiting the top of our bead. I'm going to bend that wire over the top of our pliers. So now when I take the wire away or the pliers away, I have the perfect amount of space here to do my wraps. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. I'm going to take the wire up and over, rotate the pliers so that that bottom barrel is now on the top so that I can take the wire over to close up our loop. Now, before I do those wrapped loops though, because I wanna wire wrap this directly to the chain, I'm gonna take the tail end of that wire and stick it through the last link of our chain and just slide that into the loop that we just created, okay? And then I like to use my bent chain nose pliers to hold onto the loop kind of hold the chain in my hand as well to keep everything out of the way. And we're going to wire wrap between the loop we made and the top of our bead. Okay, so once you've wire wrapped, right, now we just want to come in and cut off the remainder of the wire that was left over. And if you've got any little piece of wire that's sticking up, you can see there's a little piece that's just kind of sticking out just barely. Just want to squeeze that in with your pliers. And you've got one of your little dangles ready. Now, again, this is attached to the spool because I don't know how long I want these chain pieces to be. But I am going to come in and just cut. I left myself a bunch, right? We'll figure out at the, at the end of the pendant portion how long we need this to be because I know we're going to cut some more of this chain off. But just for now. All right, we're going to do two more of our knotted head pins. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two more little pieces of wire. Okay. All right, so we're going to do our knotted head pin again. I'm grabbing the tip of the wire with the tip of the round nose pliers. I'm going to rotate or roll rather that wire right around the tip of the round nose pliers and then go a second time. And we're going to stop where there's the cut in the wire, bend the wire so that it's running underneath those coils, get off of the tool, and then you're gonna take the tail and you wanna stick it back through. This is a little bit bigger piece of wire, way more wire than I need here. But you've made yourself a little lasso. Come in with your nylon jaw pliers. Don't use regular pliers for this. If you do and you go to pull the wire through, you're going to strip that coating that's on the outside of the wire that keeps it nice and shiny. So don't do that. Okay. When you pull through, you've made yourself a knot. You can thread on your bead now. And we're going to do another wrapped loop. So coming in with the chain nose, bending the wire over the top. Now for the round nose pliers, we're going up and over. Rotate the pliers and take the wire over to the other side. And again, we're going to take the tail end of this extremely long piece of wire and we're going to thread it through a link of chain and snap those two together. Okay. And then we are going to wire wrap in the space between the loop, the top of our bead. And then we want to come in with our cutter tool and trim off our excess. Now, this is a nice scrap piece that I can sit to the side because that's a nice long piece of wire. Okay, tuck in if you've got any that's sticking out. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and cut this piece of chain too with just you know we'll figure it out <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there that's the joy of design on the fly you don't really know what your measurements are going to need to be right all right so one more knotted head pin so round nose pliers looping around the very tip once second time all right we're going to stop you're going to take that wire and make sure you're bending it underneath those two coils, okay? Go underneath. Don't go the other way. That's why it's, it's important to bend that wire before you take it off of the tool so that you know which direction to take that wire. That wire needs to be running away from your hand and away from the pliers, okay? Now, take the tail end of that wire and you're just going to bend it backwards and you're going to stick it through those two coils that you just made, right? Bring in your nylon jaw pliers. Grab 
grab and pull. All right, you've got yourself a little knot and our last little drop bead here. Okay, so now we're gonna do a wrapped loop. Chain those pliers. Okay, coming in, round nose pliers, we're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over, and we're going to attach this to one more piece of chain, so take the tail end of your wire, thread it through, pop those two together. I should just keep making knotted head pins for Wanda's knotted head pin alerts, she did three in a row. <laughs> And she's like, whew, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I should just make like six or seven just to get her just to keep going. I won't. All right, now we're ready to cut off the excess wire. Again, got a good scrap piece. Just going to set that to the side. Tuck in if you've got any. All right, now we're going to trim this off. Okay, so now what I want to do is I got to figure out how long I want these chain pieces, how long I want these little staggered drops to be. I'm thinking I want one, do I want them to all three be different lengths or two of them to be the same, one of them to be longer? It's really hard to know. Because they, when you lay them flat, they look a certain way, right? If I lay them flat, then obviously I can make a clear middle bead. He's nice and long. And then I can put the two on either side of it and that's all well and good. But then when they hang, they don't always hang exactly like you want them to. So thinking, just making some little adjustments here. That looks pretty good, right? All right, so I'll lay my pendant on top here, kind of determine that's that's a good amount of space between the bottom of our pendant and where our drops are going to fall. So I'm just going to stick my finger right in here. <laughs> Let's use one of our scrap chains or one of our scrap pieces of wire. And this is like such a weird way to do this, but I'm going to take that scrap wire and go through the links of the chain. <laughs> This is definitely not how I normally would do this, but I mean, since we didn't know what we were going to be doing. All right, so hold on. Uh-oh, one fell off. That's all right. Let's see. So... What was that? That's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything because they keep sliding off of my piece of wire. Let's try that one more time, shall we? All right. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to go through this link right here. Oh, I think I got that spot on that time. <laughs> okay. Now, very carefully. Now I'm gonna cut off my um, my extra chain here. <laughs> it's definitely an interesting way to do that. Uh, I always use a scrap piece of wire, but I, yeah, this was just this is too funny. So I'm just gonna trim off the links. I know some people like to undo them with pliers, but I just don't. I just don't have time for that. <laughs> All right, there is there's our pieces of chain ready to go. Okay. They're all cut to the length that I want them to be. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a piece, another piece of my 22 gauge wire. Okay. And I'm going to wire wrap my pendant here and I'm going to need a jump ring though. Let's grab, let's just use a little jump ring. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to grab like a, a four millimeter jump ring. That might actually be a three millimeter jump ring, but okay. I'm going to open our jump ring up 
and I'm going to thread on the opposite ends of our chain pieces. So not the piece with the bead, obviously, but our clean link of chain. I'm going to thread that those on with our longest one in the middle. Okay, so there's two. Thread on the last one. Okay, now I'm going to close that back. All right, so now these are secure with a jump ring. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire wrap our pendant. I'm going to take a piece of 22 gauge wire, and because it's drilled through the front, I'm going to take the wire through just like that. Okay, and we're going to wire wrap this like a briolette, but I'm going to thread on our jump ring with our chain pieces on the back. Remember the earrings we made on Friday? This is very similar to that. So this is going to be hanging from the back of our pendant. Okay. All right. Now we're just going to wire wrap and that's going to capture our jump ring with our chain pieces. Okay. All right. Now... We're going to just do a, a wrapped loop here, but we've got two wires. So we're going to crisscross those two wires. Okay. We're going to take one of the wires and we're going to bend it straight up and down. And then the other wire, we're going to bend it out this way. Okay. So we're kind of making an L with our wires. I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers to hold on to that. And we're going to wire wrap around about three times okay and i'm going to come in and cut off this excess wire all right now if you want to put a bead right here you can um it's a it's a nice little opportunity to put one should we put one i don't think i will though i think i'm going to leave mine just like it is and I'm just going to do a wrapped loop here. So I'm going to treat these three wire wraps just like they were a bead. In other words, I'm going to place my pliers right over the top of them, right next to them, just like I would if it was a, um, a bead instead of these wire wraps, right? So our wire wraps that we're about to make are just going to meet up with these. So I'm bending the wire over the top of the pliers. Come in and we're going up and over rotate and take the wire over to the other side okay let's switch hands here and now we're going to do our wire wraps and we just want to wrap until we meet up with the wraps that we just created so you want it to look as seamless as you can get it to look sometimes it looks perfectly seamless other times it does not I just Hope that it looks pretty good. Now you can see it's got a little, there's a little bump in it. You see the little bump? A lot of times if you'll just squeeze that with your pliers, that'll take that little bump out. And it's as seamless as it's going to look, right? So we had three wire wraps and then we going upwards, we had three wire wraps coming down. They meet each other in the middle and we trim off. All right. Now, my wire wrapped loop is, is going this direction because I'm going to thread this onto a jump ring to be our, our kind of our go-between for our pendant and then the beaded sections of our necklace. Uh, Patty says you can wrap over the previous wraps, right? You can if you want to. Just remember that if you start out like this, right? If you start out and you're doing three wraps coming down and then you want to wrap over those wraps that you already made, they're going to stick out because obviously wrapping over the top of something is going to make them a little bit more chunky monkey. But yeah, you absolutely can wrap over the top of them if you want to. Okay. All right. So I'm going to lay this down, right? Because we're going to, we're going to build off of this. So this is our pendant in the middle, right? Now, all I want to do is, and I want to try to keep this simple because I, I don't know, I'm just kind of in a simple mood and I feel like these beads really kind of speak for themselves. So I want to do some little beaded sections and then a piece of chain and then another little beaded section and then maybe just the chain for the length of this. But I want our beaded little sections to be super pretty. So I'm going to grab some of these blue iris 
check glass. These are some eight millimeter beads. And we'll just lay these out and kind of figure out what we want to do. So I'm thinking we two beaded, two little beaded sections, and then another two over here. Okay, and I realize you can't see the entire pendant because of the screen. So a lot of this, you're not really gonna get the full effect of this until we get it all put together and then put on the bust. Um, let's see here. I know there are these guys. So there are some little, these bronze daisy spacers. Add some bronze daisy spacers to this. So probably do just use these like little bead caps. Like that, one here, and then here, right? And I feel like we need, I feel like this needs something else. I also have these little seed beads, which I wanna use the little bronze seed beads if they'll fit onto my wire, but I need another bead. Just don't know what I want that bead to be. I think I might use the pyrite beads, I'm not gonna, not going to overdo it with the seed beads. I'm actually just going to be using the little bronze ones. Let's do the pyrite. And I can change this if it doesn't, doesn't look the way I want it to. But design on the fly. All right. So if I put one of those. You know what? I tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and make ourselves a wraps loop and that'll, that'll give us a better way to like stack our beads and see what they're going to look like. So I'm going to cut a piece of 22 gauge wire. This will just make things easier. We're going to do a wraps loop on one end. Okay. So I'm grabbing the wire. I'm going to give it a bend and we are gonna come in. We're going up and over rotate take the wire over now this time we're not we're not wrapping between the loop and a bead we're just wrapping underneath the loop so i'm gonna do about three wraps so we basically just made ourselves an eye pin with a wraps loop i'm gonna come in and trim off all right now i can use this to stack my beads on and see what this is going to look like so i i want to put one of the little seed beads All right so there's a little seed bead pyrite bead a bronze daisy spacer one of the blue iris checks and then just i just want to repeat that now i don't know this might be a little dark i might have to i may have to take the pyrite out and put something in its place so i just put another Another little, <laughs> another little seed bead on one end. I don't know about that. It seems a little dark, right? Like I feel like this needs a pop of color. I'm not quite sure what I want to put in it in its place. So I feel like the red is just way out there because there's not any red in our focal. And though it goes with the overall bead mix itself, because there is more red in this mix, but I don't have any red going on in my design. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There's green. Those are way too big. Hmm. Need something. Need something. Give me one of these. I love these so much. But what color would we, maybe the blue or the green? Let's just try it, right? I mean, we're designing on the fly. That's what we're doing. So we're just trying some different things here to see what we like. So I could either go with more blue or I could go with green. I feel like the blue is still pretty dark, but don't really know till you put it all together. Kathy says bicones. I could use the bicones, but... 
I was really trying to save them. <laughs> but she might be right. I may have to just, I just, I love these bicones. I've already used so many of them. Like, <laughs> I know I can get more from Sam, but let's see what it looks like with a bicone. So, seed bead, a bicone. Maybe the daisy spacer needs to go, right? I feel like the daisy spacer, though, kind of breaks everything up. But if we left the daisy spacer out, I think that's going to be the winner. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Can't go wrong with bygones. I think that's pretty. Okay, so that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. All right. So we're going to make four of these little sections. <laughs> oh, goodness. What did I use the bicones on, says Katie. I'm glad you asked. So I used the bicones on our hardwired project. And I'm going to show you real quick. For those of you who are not a member of the hardwire, but maybe you would like to join this coming month, this is what I used our bicones on. Is that not awesome? So... I, I don't particularly like the tiger eye and the bicone combination because the colors are not quite right, but I couldn't find another donut bead, but this is our hardwired project. Uh, okay. So yeah, gold spacers, I think would be, um, would be better instead of the, the bronze ones just for this little, but I, I'm not going to go digging through my stash. We're using what we got right here. So I'm just going to keep it like it is. I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap loop. Okay. And we're going to make four of these. And of course, all four of these could be different. You don't have to make them all exactly the same, right? You could, you could make your little beaded sections different. But there's our little beaded section. I'm going to come in. Trim off. Okay. So... Now that I've made a huge mess on the bead mat, I don't know where the fuzz, the fuzz came from the pyrite. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's do, let's do three more of those and then we'll put this together. I'm excited to see what this is gonna look like when it's all together. Okay, so another wrapped loop on a piece of 22 gauge wire. up and over, rotate the pliers, take that over to the other side. And again, not wrapping up against a, a bead here. So we're just doing three wire wraps. And we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and trim off. Okay. All right, now we need one of the little seed beads. You know what? Seed bead could have been a different color too. The seed bead could have been any of these colors. Let's try a blue one for this one. Do like a little, a little pop of blue and then a bicone. And then our big check glass. Oh, that's pretty too. That's pretty too. Oh no. We'll just keep them both. <laughs> Why not, right? I mean, it's just a seed bead. It's not like it's like detracting from the overall finished piece. It's just a little baby. So it's just a little extra. All right, we're going to do a wrap loop. Okay, up and over. Aldona says she loves to design on the fly with me and Wanda agrees because she likes to see the design process. I'm so much more comfortable designing on the fly with you guys than I used to be. It used to give me major anxiety because I was really afraid that I was going to do something that I didn't like and the project was going to be terrible and I was going to leave you with that. But I've come to realize that the design process, number one, you definitely learn, even if we're doing simple techniques like this, we're just doing wrapped loops, even if we're doing just simple techniques over and over again, right? Um, you're, you're gaining more than just the technique and the repetition of the techniques. You're getting to see somebody else's design style, their creativity. Uh, you kind of have input into the design. 
And if there are mistakes or there are things that you don't like, right? Or there are things that I don't like, um, we're learning those things together, right? And everything that you take, even the mistakes, you can take those into your own designs and learn from them. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I used to not be, but I, I think it's a great learning opportunity. I agree, Mary. It is a wonderful learning opportunity. So I think it's fun. All right. So this one's going to match the other one. So by cone and that one or do another by cone. Lots of people like the design on the fly. That's awesome. Well, I'll do more design on the flies on Tuesdays. Sometimes I, I have a project in mind that I really want to show you guys. Other times it's like this where I have beads that I really want to show you. And when it's beads over design, design on the fly is usually the way to go. All right, up and over, rotating the pliers and taking the wire to the other side. And we're going to wrap in that space. Okay, we're going to trim off. So there's that one. Now remember, we're going to put a little section of chain between these, right? We're going to put a jump ring here. I'll sh we'll do all that stuff together. We've got one more little beaded section to make. Oh, thank you, Ruby. I hope so. I hope so. I hope that when you guys come and hang out with me, not only are you getting some, you know, some inspiration, maybe learning something new, but maybe more than just for your jewelry, right? Maybe for like your business. Maybe, maybe I, I help give you the confidence that you need to take that next step and open your Etsy shop or do your first craft booth or start your own website or teach your own classes, you know? Um, and of course we all know I've been through lots of trials this past year, you know, lots of hard stuff going on, but this has been, this has been my outlet to come and be with you guys it has really helped me to get through some major trauma in my life. And I hope that I'm the, I can help be a little shine my, weird little light into your life <laughs> and help you through something too. You know, we can all have each other's back and keep each other smiling and giggling. As you guys know, I don't take myself too seriously. I think that's the key to life is to never take yourself too seriously. All right. So we've got our little beaded sections. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to combine all of this into an actual necklace. We've got our little parts, but now we need to really put these together. So I'm going to start in the center here and we're going to start with a jump ring in the middle. And then you could do like a decorative ring here if you wanted to, but I'm just going to keep it simple with just a, a jump ring. And I'm not using the little baby jump rings that I used on our pendant. I'm going to use a little bit bigger as a jump ring. All right, so I'm going to open up our jump ring. Okay, I'm going to thread on our pendant section. And I'm going to thread on our beaded sections, one for the left and one for the right. Now, depending on how this looks, right, we may need another, we may need a little chain section here. I don't know yet. Um, it may be that we need some chain to break up the beads, right? And our pendant. But I definitely want to put a little chain section in between these two. So what I'm going to do, we're going to use our little scrap piece of wire again. And we're going to bring our little chain back in here. And we're going to decide how long we want that piece of chain to be. So I'm going to thread on the link. Okay. And <clears throat> we're just going to look. Now, a couple of things you got to take into consideration when you're measuring out your chain pieces and how, how long you want those to be in between your beads. You also have to consider, are you going to add jump rings to this? Like, are you going to do just straight chain between your wrapped loops where 
if you if I had done it ahead of time, if I had all the pieces ready, since we're designing on the fly, obviously I couldn't pre-cut my chain pieces. Um, but if you were going to do this ahead of time, right? You could pre-cut your chain pieces and wrap them directly to your wrapped loops, kind of like what we did down here on our pendant. Um, or are you going to add jump rings between here? And then you got to decide, are you going to use little jump rings that are not going to take up a whole lot of space? Are you going to use bigger jump rings? Because all of those things are going to take, they're going to add to the measurement overall. I think I'm going to use the small jump rings uh, instead of opening up my chain links. I just got to find, what did I do with those little baby jump rings? <laughs> I had them right here in my hand. I'm going to use some little jump rings. So I have to take those into consideration when I'm doing my measuring. Okay. So. <clears throat> I'm going to trim this off and then I'm going to pull out the ruler just to look because I have a feeling this is a little over an inch of chain. But if you want a good measurement, so yeah, we're like at an inch and a fourth with our chain piece. Okay. So an inch and a fourth for the chain piece. I need to cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut four of these just in case, but I really only need two at the moment, but I'm cutting ahead because I may want to put one in here between the pendant and our first little bead section. So it's better to go ahead and cut more than you need than to have to take your, your pieces apart so that you can get another measurement of that chain. All right. So I just hang them on a piece of wire like this and then just trim them. Oh, I cut that one too short. <laughs> Whoopsie. All right. Pay attention to what I'm doing. I got to pay attention, not you. I'm, I'm telling me to pay attention. Okay. All right, so there we have four pieces of chain ready to go if we need them. We're going to start out with just two of them. I have made a huge mess. Okay, so we're going to take one of our little baby jump rings. I really think these are three millimeter. There's no way these are fours. I could be wrong, but I'm going to thread on chain. I'm going to thread that. Whoops, I'm going to thread that onto one of our little beaded sections close that back okay and then another little jump ring okay and then our next little bead section it's not a bead okay so there's that right we're going to do the same thing over here on the other side <laughs> One that says, if your work surface isn't a mess, are you really beating at all? Yeah, I, I agree. I always make a mess. I try not to, but when we design on the fly, like you really get to see like the chaos that happens. Because if I've got a project already and I only have the parts that I'm going to use, like I keep everything so tidy while we're designing together. Um, but design on the fly, you really get to see like it's a mess and it just gets, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now let's let's look. So basically what we've got is like a little Y necklace. And I understand you can't really see the whole thing in the uh, iPad at the moment, right? But this is all coming down to this. And I'm, I don't know if we need chain between or if we don't. I, I kind of feel like we don't. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our length on and I'll just save those two little extra chain pieces. We'll put it on the bus together and we'll look at it. And if we decide that we need to add those in, we can do it while it's actually on the bus. So we can do that together if we need to. So I'm going to open up another little jump ring. I'm going to thread length or a link of my chain on. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna hold it up. 
<laughs> All right. That'll do. <laughs> I can always add chain later, right? Like at this point, this, you're going to know what kind of measurement of chain you're going to need. Everybody's measurements of chain are going to be different depending on how long you want your necklace to be. But I'm going to go ahead and attach the chain to the other side. Now I could do my chain measurements the same way um, by just putting them both on a piece of wire. Whoops. I did not mean to close that yet. Um, but I'm not going to do it that way. This, this time to measure them, I'm just going to lay them side by side, right? Make sure I get all of the little kinks out of the chain. Lay that out just like so. And then I'm going to come in. I know you can't, you might not be able to see. All right. So our two pieces of chain are even. I'm going to put the hardware on the back. We'll put this on the bust and then we'll make our decision, right? Because it, it's really going to be helpful for you to see this hanging and for me to see it hanging uh, before we make our final judgment on those extra chain pieces. What have I done? <laughs> I can use little baby jump rings because I'm not going to dig for the six millimeters, but probably would make more sense to use the six millimeters back here. So jump ring in our clasp. Okay. And then just a jump ring on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to secure our clasp and I'm going to turn you guys around real quick. Okay, front camera, turn you around. Ooh. Okay, so now we're going to put this on the bus and we're going to take a look at it and see what we need. Whoa. Susie wants to know where you got the chain. Um, so this chain is just, it's just beetle on chain. It's just the smallest um, link chain. I, I think it's just cable chain and you can get it from beetle on. They have it in uh, the gold and in the silver and they also have it in hematite, I believe. All right. So let's see. So here's what it looks like just with the beads it would help if i could hold it straight but i can't because everything's backwards in the camera and i yeah the struggle is constant so i like it just like it is it looks really beautiful it really really does i am a huge huge fan if you wanted to though you could add oh chain right in there right so it would be pendant piece of chain beads piece of chain beads. But I think it looks good just like that, to be completely honest with you. Um, I also, there, I mean, this is obviously, this is just a base design because we did this on the fly. But if you wanted to, you could do tons more. You could really have like a full tassel going on with the beads hanging from behind the pendant. Um, you could do, because in, in the bead box, there were, let's see, in Sam's bead box, two four six eight nine ten eleven there were i think there were 12 of these drops so you could use all 12 drops and if you were going to do that just for balance purposes right now this is just my opinion but if you were going to use all 12 drops and you were going to make this the section in the front more heavy right more like a tassel i would make a longer overall necklace I just find that for balance purposes, if it's heavy in a tassel, it hangs better on the body, right? If it is a little bit longer. Um, sure, if you make it nice, if you make it too short, I kind of feel like it, it looks off just a little bit. But like I said, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I mean, what do I know? <laughs> I'm just just sharing my opinion there. If you wanted to make this part heavier with more beads, I would make a longer necklace. That's all I'm saying. Um, but, you know, 
But yeah, and I agree. I agree. Evelyn says she thinks either way it would be beautiful. I think so too. I think either way, whether you put the chain to separate your first little group of beads from that pendant or not, I don't think it's going to make that huge of a difference. Um, but yeah. Uh, Shelly says one piece of chain from the middle jump ring to the pendant. Yeah, you definitely could do that. So you could, instead of having it, and that would make it, give it a little bit more drape instead of having that V. So forget the jump ring right here. You could just put a piece of chain right here and hang your pendant on that actual piece of chain. And it would still have a V, but if you beaded that instead, it would give it more of kind of like a U curve. So many different options here. And I love that. That's part of the reason that I love our design on the fly. Um, one of, or one of the other reasons why I love the design on the fly is because we get to have these kinds of discussions where everybody kind of throws in like their opinions and what they would do or have questions about what, what if you did this or what if you did that. I love that because I get to talk through those things with you guys and, and sometimes even show you those things. So I think it's awesome. Colleen says so many options here. I agree. So, so many options. I've just given you a jumping off point. You can take this and run with it. There are opportunities for so many more things. You could do a whole other strand, right? You could do multi layers in between there. If you wanted to, you could make it really long. You could make it short. You could, you could add extra like dangles and fun things from it. So, so many different things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Holly says the copper pendant is the star for sure. I agree. I agree. That is just, it's just gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for coming and hanging out with me this Tuesday. I love our designs on the fly. So if you want to see more design on the fly, I definitely can do that for you guys because it's a fun time. It's it's really cool because it's it's real. You know what I mean? And I'm one of those people anyway. Like I try to be as real as possible with me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peach. <laughs> Not everybody likes peaches. Some people like lemons. Some people like oranges. And I'm okay with that, right? I'm all right with that. So um, you can be the sweetest peach in the tree. And some people still just want an orange. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Again, I'm just keeping it real. You know, <laughs> you know how I am. So yeah, thank you so, so much. I appreciate y'all coming and hanging out with me today, uh, this Tuesday. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again on Friday. For those of you who are in my hardwired group, I'll be seeing you guys at 4.30 this afternoon where we will be working on some more beautiful beaded goodness. We're making these donut pendants. I can't wait to show that to you guys because it's super, super cool. Um, yeah, that's it. I love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day. Have a great rest of the week and I will see you guys again soon. Bye guys. <laughs>